What is up guys, how's it going? My name is Erm Joseph and in today's video I'm touching base back on a MacBook that we set up last time. I'm going to be doing a part 2 of the 13 inch MacBook Pro that we repurposed and um, we, we refurbished as well. We brought it back to life by installing a new operating system. I thought it would be a good idea in this video, part 2, to install an SSD inside that laptop. So currently inside that laptop there is a conventional hard drive and I'm going to be putting an SSD inside and I'm going to show you the before and after the read and write speeds and how it's comparable once the SSD is installed inside to the new computers of today. So this is a good example just to show you that even though it's an old computer you can still bring life back into it and it could still be useful. It may not be just as strong as the new ones but if you have one of these old laptops sitting around you know you could still use it. So check it out and um, yeah Let's get to it. Okay, so here's the MacBook Pro. It's a A1278 13 inch Apple MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and install a software that shows the read and write speed. And uh, we can test that because right now there is a conventional hard drive inside and then we're gonna be installing an SSD. So we're gonna show the difference between the conventional and then the SSD. So. I'm gonna go ahead and install, I believe it's a Blackmagic uh, speed tester, something along those lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that and I'm gonna see what, uh, what results we get. This is an older operating system, so that may be one problem we may be facing right now. But maybe I can download an older version. Okay, so I had a little bit of a complication. I had Lion 10.7.5 on the internal conventional hard drive. and. I'm not able to install the Blackmagic disk speed test program so I had to use my external hard drive but that is also a conventional hard drive so it would give roughly the same results it's also been used multiple times like for years so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the program and we'll see what results I get so let's see and by the way um, I know it doesn't make a huge difference, but this is a Core 2 Duo, like a difference if any. But this is a Core 2 Duo processor, and I believe it has 2 gigabytes of RAM, or uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM, something like that, nothing crazy. Uh, the hard drive in here is a 1 terabyte Western Digital hard drive, so it's just going through the testing right now. Uh, we'll see the final results, but I'm sure you can see it's nothing crazy. The <laughs> The meter isn't even going up, like it's not even moving from the bottom. Fans are kicking up high. So once this is done, we'll get the numbers for this. And then um, we'll compare it side by side with the numbers that I get with the solid state drive. And by the way, you know, the good thing about today like being in 2020 is that the prices for solid state drives are really cheap. I can get a 2.5 solid state drive and it's like 120 gigabyte solid state drive for $20. Maybe a 240 gigabyte solid state drive for under 30. And then a 500 gigabyte solid state drive for under $50 you can get a 500 gigabyte um, or close to 50 I would say. Obviously if you go to the higher end brands like uh, Samsung, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's not gonna be too far off. Long story short, you can really get one hell of a bank for your buck just by changing one piece that is relatively inexpensive compared to changing an entire computer. So the final score we got was a write speed of 35.9 megabytes per second and a read speed of 38.8 megabytes per second. Once again, this is a conventional hard drive. Yes, I booted it from the external hard drive, but still, it is a conventional hard drive. It's a one terabyte Western Digital. It's a My Passport Ultra. The specs on this machine are a 2.4 gigabyte Core 2 Duo with a 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install a 120 gigabyte solid state drive and we will see the difference. Alright, so this is pretty bad. There's so much dust and gunk in here. It's like layered on top of layered. 
I don't just refurbish laptops by replacing parts, I do my best to clean the inside as well just so that it runs more efficiently. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it all up and we'll be right back in. There we are. All cleaned up, looks brand new inside. So time to take out this hard drive and put in SSD. Okay, let's open up the program and see what we're working with. So there you have it guys, substantially larger numbers. Let's not forget, this is a Core 2 Duo processor. I know it doesn't make a huge difference and it does have four gigabytes of RAM, I believe. That's four gig yeah, four gigabytes DDR3 RAM. So from what it was, and it keeps on going up every single time. Before, it kept on doing the same test over and over again. I know because I was trying to complete each one of the tests, but sure enough, it wasn't able to conduct them. So right now we've got 295 megabytes per second write speed and 266 megabytes of uh, megabytes per second of read speed. So it's just completing all these tests. I'm just gonna let it go all the way through. The other one, it wasn't working. It just, it kept on going over and over again. None of the check marks were popping up. So it's looking like on average, we're getting a write speed of around 180 to 200 megabytes per second. A read speed is pretty consistent. It's at 266 megabytes per second. So that's a substantial change between the conventional drive. I think we're getting a good idea of uh, the positive effects of having a solid state over a conventional drive. So, towards the end of the video, I'll show you guys the numbers of this MacBook, which is very old. This is like a 10-year-old MacBook. It's a Core 2 Duo processor. And uh, the cost, the latest operating system you can put on it, and the cost of entry, and the cost of upgrading. All right, so now that that's done, the last test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go to my applications, and I'm gonna transfer a file from the applications folder onto the desktop and I'm gonna see how long it takes so let us transfer over something like copy iTunes and paste it and let's see how long it takes it is a 281 megabyte and it took five seconds so we have 281 megabytes and it took it from the application folder onto the desktop in five seconds. Let's see if I have a larger file I can drop off. Let's do the whole utilities folder. Okay, I'm just gonna copy it over. Two 
258 megabyte folder and it's taking about 10 seconds. It's taking 10 seconds because there are multiple different programs within. But uh, sure enough, it did take double the time, but that's just one program compared to there's probably like 15 different utilities inside this. And let, now let's do the same thing with uh, the conventional drive. Okay, so if we try to copy over iTunes from the conventional drive, let's see how long it takes. Same thing, 281 megabytes. It's saying less than a minute. We'll do a, we'll do a, a check on the timestamp, timestamp, <laughs> and see what it's looking at. Now it's saying it's about 10 seconds. Now it's saying it's about five seconds. And keep in mind, there's just one item. I'm about to do the utilities filter. Okay. Now let's do the utilities. It's saying preparing to copy. So this one is 660 megabytes. Um, it's a little bit more than uh, double what the other uh, operating systems utilities folder size was. So we'll just cut the time by roughly 60% just to get a better idea of how long this is taking compared to with an SSD. All right, and it just finished. Okay guys, there you have it. That was the right speed capabilities from a conventional and an SSD, the back and forth, all the same hardware. So there you have it guys. With very minimal, minimal amount of investment into a solid state hard drive, you can bring life into an old computer. It's a version of what I do. That way, you know, you don't have to per se recycle it with the recycling center. If you have a computer like this at home that you can bring life back into, why not do it yourself? You know, these days, people aren't able to spend money as freely as they used to. So, solutions like this are very good because you can simply order the solid state online on Amazon.com for $20 to $50, depending on up to like a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And I've just shown you how I can install it. It's pretty easy. I think it's an amazing solution. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this informative video on bringing life back to this old Apple MacBook Pro. It is a model A1278 and it has a core to duo processor. So thank you guys for checking out the video, I really appreciate it. Once again, if this video like interested you, and if you think other people would be interested in videos like this, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And, you know, see you on the next one.